So we're talking about question one, and I'm generating some fake data again with sort of the data from the previous question that I had. And I was mentioning that assign for this assignment, your question one is basically going to have you do arc elasticities because you're finding out elasticity values between two years. And question two is basically a point price elasticity question because I explicitly say that. So trying to get a sense of uh, where to go from here. So here's my fake data. And trying to figure out the arc elasticity. Well, my, and I was telling everybody about my slide six. Here it is. So the book has, the book kind of shows you the version that's on the right here. So the elasticity is this change of Q over change of P times this average P, average Q. I always kind of think because on page 207 of your book, it says the elasticity is the percent change of Q divided by the percent change in P. And so essentially the percent change of Q is this change of Q over the average Q. And the percent change of price is the change in price over the average price. So kind of more directly, even though it makes like a, a you know, two fractions within a fraction, more directly, this percent change of Q or percent change of P is written out in this way on the left. And I kind of wish the book would have done that, but they didn't. Um, but again, if I could kind of multiply things and move my terms around and get, get the equation that the book actually has you use. So I'm just going to, when I'm showing this example, though, I'm just going to keep doing it the way I've, I always do it. So to figure out my elasticity of these things, price or tuition, quantity or headcount or credit hours. So it's over an arc, so I can't do anything for the first column, but I'll do it for the second. Well, change of Q. So this is the newest value, minus the oldest, divided by, luckily, Excel has a way of calculating the average. So we got my change of my quantities here, C3 minus C2, divided by the average of those two quantities. Hit enter. Percent change of my price will be the change in my price. And again, I've got to be careful that the order I do it is the same as the order that I did the, the quantity thing. So I did the newest price minus the older price divided by the average. And so the elasticity is actually going to be equals the percent change of Q divided by the percent change of price. So this is actually my elasticity. Or if you didn't want to do all these extra steps in between, you could just say, give me two parentheses and say the change of Q over the average of these two quantities and then close that off. That's the numerator. All that divided by a big denominator, which is the change in price over the average price. Close that off. So it's a big nasty equation, but gives me the same value, of course. And so this is the this negative 0.628. That's the elasticity just between the year 2000 and 2001. And I said to calculate oh, where to go. Calculate annual elasticities, which means you do need to find it for every single year. And that sounds bad, but hey, Excel is easy because it'll just copy the formulas down for you as long as you drag it down like that. So, even if I did it this way too, using my single formula, it does it the same way. If this is too much for you, you know, you could even make a column that's just the change in Q and the average Q if you wanted to do that um, explicitly. If you wanted to just do it like that, you could do that too. Though so equal the change in Q, that minus that, equals the average Q, be the average of those two. Percent change would be the change over the average, and that's the same as what I found here. So you could do it all with, with a thousand columns or just with one. But then later I said, after some other stuff, I said calculate the average elasticity over all the year's values for headcount and for credit hours. So what I was hoping people would get there is that, well, I've got all these different, you know, at least here I've got four values, 
of the arc elasticities over those years. And I just wanted to know what's the average of those. So average that whole column and get some average elasticity, negative 0.73. If I go back here, so this my column D is going to give me the percent change of Q, which is the top part of what I wrote as my elasticity equation here, because I did the change over the average. And the percent change of P was that, or let's see, what I what is my column E? My e, column E is my percent change in price. So that's the bottom half of this elasticity formula. So then, well, I just need to divide this part of it by this bottom part of it. So my column E was just the percent change of Q, or my column D stuff, divided by the percent change of price, or column E. Finding the average, again, you'll have, your table's gonna be bigger, because you're gonna go from um, 1985 at least, no, 1980 at least, to 2011, yeah, there we go. So you'll have 30-ish rows of data to go through, but I don't know if it's gonna, what's gonna do about this. If I were to try to extend this, yeah, let's try to do something. So again, you're gonna have a table that's that's 30 odd uh, rows long. And if I did that, so if you had this many elasticities to deal with, again, the part about calculate the average elasticity over all the year's values, well, you're only gonna have one average. So you just say, well, equals the average of all these things. So again, average elasticity of negative 